Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rupinder Syal and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about hydrophobic interaction chromatography, which is a very important technique for academia as well as industry. Hydrophobic interaction chromatography or HIC as they call it or HIC is very much used for production of monoclonal antibodies which are one of the most expensive medicines in the world right now as well as conjugates of drugs with monoclonal antibodies. This is only one of the applications of hydrophobic interaction chromatography and there are multiple other applications for protein purification using this technique so let's get started with this technique. Now the concept behind hydrophobic interaction chromatography is pretty simple and it is one of the most fundamental concepts of biochemistry and that relates to the hydrophobic effect. What is the hydrophobic effect? It is the effect that happens when water molecules try to dissolve a non-polar or hydrophobic substance. Now there are two types of substances which are of main importance in biological molecules and that is polar or hydrophilic molecules and non-polar or hydrophobic molecules. Most of the organic solvents, many of the uh, amino acids for example glycine, alanine, valine, leucine these are hydrophobic in nature. There are a few polar amino acids for example serine, threonine as well as aspartate, glutamate these are polar amino acids. Now what happens is any substance which is non-polar in nature. So for example you can imagine a mixture of oil and water. If you have a droplet of oil in water, water molecules will form this kind of solvation layer around them. And because they cannot form any hydrogen bonds with these non-polar substances which will offset some delta G, the overall delta G for this reaction is positive because and there is decrease in entropy. Because of this decrease in entropy, this reaction is pretty much unfavorable. So what happens is there can be some compensation for this effect by association of proteins so that some of the water molecules they can be freed. So that leads to a partial increase in entropy so that makes it a little bit more favorable as compared to this situation. And that's exactly what happens in hydrophobic chrom interaction chromatography. What we have is a base matrix which is our stationary phase and it has attached some groups usually hydrophobic groups weakly hydrophobic groups not strongly hydrophobic groups and these try to bind to the proteins which are hydrophobic in nature. Now what drives this? It is driven by adding of salts. Now what happens is this uh, procedure is also called salting out and what is essentially is that if you add a lot of salts to protein mixtures they will expose the hydrophobic areas of the protein because they will remove the solvation layer of the protein which is the water molecules covering that protein so hydrophobic residues which are on the surface of the protein will become exposed and then they will try to stick to the matrix because they will try to do the same thing that we talked about in the protein self-association now they will try to do it with the matrix and that's what drives the binding of hydrophobic proteins to the matrix exactly the same effect is a critical player in protein folding also Proteins, as you know, they are linear chains of amino acids. They have some polar side chains, non-polar side chains of amino acids. Uh, they have positively charged, negatively charged amino acids. And the driving principle of protein folding is that the hydrophobic residues, they come to reside at the center of the protein. They form the core of the protein because they want to stay away from the water as much as possible as compared to polar residues. Polar residues, for example, serine, threonine, asparagine, lysine, arginine, these are pretty polar in nature. These have a lot of charges or at least some polarity. So they can interact with polar solvents like water, which is omnipresent in the cytoplasm. But hydrophobic residues, they like to stay away from the water as much as possible. And that's exactly what happens in hydrophobic interaction chromatography as well. Now, here is a depiction of what is actually happening at the molecular level. Here is the stationary phase shown in this diagram as this gray bead. 
it has hydrophobic surfaces now these are the groups attached to the beads these are hydrophobic groups which we'll discuss in a minute and we have this protein of interest and it has around it some highly ordered water molecules which is not a very favorable or sustainable situation to be in now what it will do is if we add a lot of salt usually the salt which is chosen is ammonium sulfate if we choose to add this lot of salt usually two molar salt what it will do is it will remove some of the water molecules from the protein it will expose those hydrophobic areas and now those hydrophobic areas will be forced to bind to these hydrophobic surfaces of the matrix and the more hydrophobic a protein is the it will need even less salt to get it attached to the matrix so the most hydrophobic will attach first the least hydrophobic will attach the last now this is what happens when we add salt or remove salt which is very important for our elution step when we add high amounts of salt for example 2 molar ammonium sulfate this drives the binding so hydrophobic proteins they bind to the matrix if we remove salt it reverses the effect so now the water molecules can again little bit solvate the protein and this will remove the association of the protein from the matrix and these proteins will elute out so as we reduce the salt concentration the least hydrophobic proteins will come out first and the most hydrophobic proteins will come out the last here are shown some alkyl groups as well as aryl groups which are attached to the matrix so these are weakly nonpolar butyl octyl phenyl alkyl epoxy pg and ppg these are all different types of ligands which are attached to the stationary phase and this is what drives the binding of proteins to the stationary phase now the main component in driving the binding of proteins to the stationary phase is what is called a hofmeister series of lyotropic agents there are two types of agents uh, which are called chaotropic agents and the others are called lyotropic agents HIC or hydrophobic interaction chromatography uses the lyotropic agents like ammonium sulfate these are most stabilizing so they stabilize the binding of the proteins which are hydrophobic in nature to the stationary phase in contrast to that the chaotropic agents for example compounds which contain for example magnesium aluminium calcium and coupled with bromide or iodide so for example magnesium iodide or magnesium nitrate or for example calcium chloride these will be destabilizing and these will be chaotropic in nature they will destabilize the interaction of the uh, protein to the stationary phase so what we do is we use lyotropic agents to drive the binding and proteins which are least hydrophobic and most hydrophobic they elute in that order from the uh, from the column when we reduce the salt concentration so here are four examples cytochrome c ribonuclease a lysozyme and alpha chymotrypsin pretty well known uh, you know for the students of biochemistry at least pretty well known proteins and you can see the amount of hydrophobicity which is present on their surface depicted in yellow here so you can see there is kind of a increasing hydrophobicity in these proteins now here on the graph is how these proteins are eluted as measured by uv absorbance at a to 80 nanometer and when we decrease the salt concentration so here you can see the decreasing salt concentration usually we go from 2 molar to 0 molar ammonium sulfate this is the common typical procedure and you can see that the least hydrophobic protein like cytochrome c eludes first and the most hydrophobic protein like alpha chymotrypsin eludes the last okay that is the order of elution from the proteins and you can see it's a pretty good resolution although it is an idealized figure but the separation is pretty good and lastly we have this neat description of protein concentration salt concentration and a typical setup of 
hydrophobic interaction chromatography, we have the elution volume, we have high salt concentration which allows the binding so that is the equilibration and wash step of the column where we bind the proteins to the column then we have weakly bound impurity impurities which are rapidly released when we decrease the salt concentration so here is when we start decreasing the salt concentration usually by adding a little bit of either water or you know small amount of weak buffer then we have the target product this is the protein that we want to uh, purify and then we have strongly bound impurities these are even more strongly bound as compared to our target protein but they are really hard to get off so we have to get it off by using even lower concentrations of the salt so zero molar ammonium sulfate for example effectively at the last step there is column regeneration so the column can be used multiple times and as I said, this is a very important technique, especially in biopharma for production of monoclonal antibodies, especially in the last polishing steps of purification of monoclonal antibodies. And just to recap, uh, uh, many companies, for example, Agilent, Biorad, Merck, uh, Emersham, they are all involved in producing high quality reagents for hydrophobic interaction chromatography. I'm not getting any affiliate marketing or affiliate uh, promotion from these products i'm just mentioning to you that these are some of the main leaders uh, in making these products so i would highly recommend you to check out their websites they have extensive literature available for these techniques especially the theoretical as well as practical basis of these techniques so check them out i hope you like this video today for hydrophobic interaction chromatography see you in the next video till then take care bye bye